family, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Abundant Harvest Live Cast. Come on in. We've been waiting for you. We're getting ready to pray and go before the Lord. And I would ask all believers to be in agreement with me as we go before our Father's throne. Amen. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord God, for all that you are in and through our lives. We thank you that you are Alpha Omega, author and finisher of our faith. We thank you, Lord God, for your word that goes forth into the earth realm, never returning back to you void, but accomplishing everything that you set for it to do. Because it's not by our power, nor by our might, but it's by your precious Holy Spirit that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Jesus, we magnify your name today and every day. We thank you for all that you did at Calvary 2,000 years ago because you are truly the sacrificial lamb that was slain for our sins. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you're doing in and through our lives. And thank you for not leaving us comfortless, but leaving us your precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way, all of you and none of us. Father, I thank you and praise you that this cast will reach the hearts of your people and your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as well as it is in heaven. We take authority over every principality, every power, every wickedness and high place and cast down every imagination and everything that may exalt itself against the knowledge of our God. We thank you, Lord God, that we bring into captivity every thought to have the full armor of God on and have the mind of Christ. I thank you that every household is the blood of Jesus is over, over the doorpost of every household. No sickness, no disease, no lack, no, no confusion is in the home. And I thank you and praise you that, that, that husbands are on one accord leading the households and, and wives are submitted to, the, to, the, to their husbands and children are submitted to their parents. I thank you and praise you, Lord God, for this awesome word that's getting ready to go forth. And we thank you in advance for it. And we give you all the glory, all the power, and all the praise in in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you.
happening at Abundant Harvest Lift. Coming Saturday, December 19th at 12 noon, we are so excited to host our annual Christmas toy drive. Spread the word to those who are in need and also to the people that you love and let them know that this will be a drive-by toy and gift pickup. Also, if you would like to volunteer, please call our church office today and sign up. That's December 19th at 12 noon. Hey, Kingdom Kids! Yes, you! Guess what? Our Kingdom Kids department will be hosting a special children's church webinar this holiday season just for you. So parents and families, please be on the lookout for more exciting information. And lastly, be sure to look out for information regarding our Christmas, candlelight communion, and prayer service. Praise the Lord, family. I'm excited to be with you today. I am ready. I am excited about uh, this message, the series that God has uh, given me for the body of Christ. Uh, I tell you, there is no greater gift in the world than that of salvation, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You know, this is a time and a season where people... Uh, recognize there's like you know two two times out of the years that uh, people recognize uh, Christ we know that to be of course uh, Easter Sunday Resurrection Sunday right uh, as a result of Christ's resurrection and then the birth during Christmas we acknowledge the birth of Jesus Christ which we know that the 25th was not the day that Christ was born but what's most important is both the life and death of a living Savior who did something impeccable, phenomenal, supernatural to bring you and I out of the kingdom of darkness back into the kingdom of His dear Son. In other words, God loved us so much that he, he gave His only begotten Son. Praise God. The Word of God lets us know in uh, the book of John chapter 3, uh, and verse 15, that everyone who believes in Him uh, will have eternal life. Uh, everyone who puts their faith in God will have eternal life. And then the Word of the Lord says, uh, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, right? That everyone who believes in Him shall not perish, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's good news. That is a great gift. There is no God in the earth realm who guarantees or even makes that kind of statement that if you believe in me, hear me, you'll not only have uh, life, um, uh, uh, life here, but you'll also have life more abundantly, amen, both here and in the presence of God Almighty. What a phenomenal covenant promise that we call that a covenant promise. But the word of God says, for God did not send his son. Uh, into the world to condemn the world see this is the good news right here and it ties into this message but to save the world through him again to bring you and I out of a place of darkness hear me wretchedness into the glorious light of God's kingdom and power that causes not just a transformation hear me listen to me but a supernatural change conversion as a result of being born again into not just a new uh, child of God, woman of God, son of God, but brings us back into the original in, uh, state and image that God created us in, hear me, for us to be the greatest version of of ourselves that we can be we cannot be what God foreordained for us to be operating out of uh, old nature or operating out of the flesh but when the power of God 
visits a man or woman, when an individual opens their heart up to, uh, to God Almighty, opens their heart up to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives, they not only immediately experience a new life being reborn, but they also experience the, uh, they will experience the uh, eternal life that God says that we will experience. And so that is good news. And so when we understand the lordship of Jesus Christ, when we understand the, the, the power of God's word and we allow the word of God, hear me, the spirit of God to do what God has sent it to do in our lives, we, we, we get phenomenal results as a result of really, hear me, really experiencing uh, the beginning of what I call salvation. Salvation unfolds throughout our lifetime. So we experience the salvation of God uh, on this journey of faith. And speaking of the journey of faith, uh, in the book of John, again, chapters later, uh, it's a different John. Uh, but in 3 John 2, he, he's writing to his disciples. He's writing to the family of faith. He's writing to those who uh, he has uh, taught in the word of God. Amen. Uh, who he has helped develop in their faith. And he says, beloved, I pray, hear this, that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers and so uh, john uh, tells him hey listen to this my prayer for you is not only that you do well in life but that your soul prospers as well because he understood this that the soul hear me can interfere with a man having a good journey if he has not truly experience the salvation the power of salvation the delivering the the deliverance that god intended for both you and i to experience so that we can walk in a level of victory and not be bound all of our lives by the hurt pain and uh disparity of yesteryears praise god and so i've shared with you in the past two messages or so how soul wounds interfere with us being the best version of ourselves and so with that i left off on last week uh posing the question what causes the soul to heal and i share it with you the truth of god's word the truth of God's word. And when we understand that, when we get a revelation of that truth, listen to me, and apply it to our lives, we then will understand, you will understand, hear me, that trauma and soul wounds uh, cannot create uh, barriers or run interference with the truth of God's word. Why? Because the truth of God's word will overpower, hear me, and uh, annihilate, uh, darkness in the soul, in the spirit of a man. Listen to me. Uh, the, the power of God's word brings healing to a man's soul, a, a, a woman's spirit. Are you following what I'm saying? So that we can, again, be the best version of ourselves. And so John said, hey, listen, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. And so John's goodwill towards Gaius here in this particular text came from his understanding that he walked in truth. He walked in truth. He didn't just have truth, but he walked in truth. You can have a Bible, listen to me, but, but not allow the words in the Bible to, to, to become a reality in your life. Are you following what I'm saying? We have a lot of good things, but the question is, do we put those good things to use? We say we know God, but is God really, or have we really allowed God uh, as Lord of our lives to do the work, the internal work that he wants to do in our lives? Because the word works for those who allow the word, hear me, to do what it was sent to do. And that is cause, listen to me, how oh, a conversion that not only blows your mind or my mind, but it blows people's minds around us because they know the old you. They know the old me. 
And so they know that it could it could not have been anything but God. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I share with people all the time. Truth is not really power. Truth applied is power. Amen. James chapter eight, verse 31 through 32 says to the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, I want you to hear this. If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will do what? Set you free. We, ought to, we, we oftentimes uh, uh, edit that text when we quote it or refer to it and just say the truth will set you free. No, well, maybe just a little bit, but I want you to hear how uh, this instruction is written. This, this, this word here is given by Jesus Christ himself. He says, if you hold to my teaching, grasp, hold, hear me. If you, if you, if you bind the word to your self, to your soul, to your spirit, to your eyelids, to your heart. Come on, work with me. He says, you are really my disciples. And here it comes. Then you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So hold represents a process that we must go through and when we really, truly gain an understanding of the Word of God, we gain knowledge and understanding of the Word of God, hear me, we get a revelation of the Word of God, wisdom comes in and then helps us execute that which we know. And he says, once you've held on to this Word <clears throat> for, for a certain period of time, hear me, which you have to do at every turn of life on this journey, hear me, You'll not only know the truth, but that truth will set you free. Some people can be set free on their first encounter with Jesus Christ. I call that the two or the five percent group. But a lot of us, listen to me, it's a process. Most people, when they come into a relationship with God, you know, they try it out like they try new products. And if, they, if they're not getting uh, what they want out of it fast enough, what do they do? They toss it. They throw it away. They lay it aside. And, and what I've seen people do is lay the word of God, lay God aside. Say, oh, I, it's not working the way I thought it was going to work. It's not working the way that I needed to work. Listen to me. You didn't stay in the word. You didn't hold fast to the word of God. You didn't continue to study to show yourself approved. Hear me. You didn't keep it bound to you long enough so that you would really know the truth and then carry a conviction. See, belief is one thing. Faith is another thing. It's like a coin. <clears throat> so belief, I have to believe the word of God. And on the other side of that coin is faith. And that's, that, that's what makes it uh, 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 a, a, a precious uh, commodity. Because when belief and faith, listen to me, are both in operation, whoo, great things happen. Why? Because you believe you had a conviction of the truth of God's word enough, listen to me, to now apply it to your life because you know that it's going to get you results. But most of us treat the word like we treat water. Doctors will tell you you need 12 glasses of water a day, a gallon of water a day. How many of us drink eight glasses of water a day, let alone 12? There, there's so much nu nutritional benefit in H2O. I'm going somewhere. Well, family, it's the same thing with consuming the Word of God every day. How many ounces are you putting in every day? Because I want to share something with you. What you put in 
is what you'll get out of it. One of the things that I found is when I drink eight glasses of water, not 12, eight glasses of water every day, <clears throat> and I have this little jug. It sits under my, my desk. It's a gallon. <laughs> and I, I'm being honest with you, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't always get through that gallon because I find around the third glass, fourth glass, I find myself running to dispose <laughs> of, of the toxins that are being washed away in, uh, in my body, or if, you, if you follow me there. Well, see, the word is the same way. If I consume that word every single day, I'm, I'm talking about not just a verse, but if I consume the word every day, can I share something with you? Woo! It's going to push some stuff out of me. It's going to push some stuff out of you, out of us that are no good for our soul, that are no, that's no good for our spirit man. It's going to push the spiritual toxins out of our spirit man, out of our soul, our mind, our will, our, our imagination, our intellect, our you out of our heart. It's going to push it out so there'll be a healthy us. Woo! It's like when you drink enough water, listen to me, it, it has an effect on your skin. Are you guys following me? <clears throat> when, when, when we eat the manna of God every day, It shows up in our spirit, man. Pe people start to see, listen to me, this glow, a difference, a change. Are you following me? <clears throat> what am I saying to you? Sometimes the reason why we're not getting the results that we want to get out of the Word is because we're not consuming enough of it. And then when we allow, hear me, <clears throat> one of those soul wounds to be triggered or depression to knock on our door or somebody getting us anger and anger knocks on our door. Listen, we don't respond with the Word of God. We don't respond by the Spirit of God. We respond by our flesh. And so what, do we, what happens? We get, we get fleshly outcomes. And so Jesus says, you have to know the truth before you'll experience freedom i have a question for you i don't care how long you've been in church do you really know and have a revelation of the truth of god himself some truths if we were to be totally honest we don't really want to allow to dig up stuff in our lives and so we compartmentalize those things or we just don't realize we're unconscious that this that, that there's a problem here but but if you really let the word in uh, to do what it was it's designed to do because it cuts the word is sharper than what a two-edged sword Cutting to the what? The moral of the bone. Praise God. It, it cuts to the spirit of man. Uh, the soul of a man. Then what will happen is <clears throat> it'll start to root out toxins. Hear me. Darkness, hurts, pains. Come on. In the life of a child of God. So that we can really glorify God the way that God so desires for us to glorify him <clears throat> but it takes effort it takes a uh, uh, a conscious purposeful effort to not only apply the word well to one be conscious of the word at every turn and then be purposeful about applying the word <clears throat> so that we can get different results in our lives and so again, how do, how, how do we start the healing process? Well, it's simply by starting. Now, you have to get rid of ego. You have to get rid of pride. Because you know what ego tells you? You're okay. Pride tells you, man, you, you, you got it all together. When truth be told, you know you don't. Come on. See, one of the things... 
that religion does is it tricks us. <laughs> you say, what do you mean? <clears throat> See, oftentimes, people think just because they receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior or just because they go to church, hear me, every Sunday, attend a Bible study, or you don't do any of those things, but you can quote five chapters of the Bible. We think, hey, you know what? We have it all together. Or, 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 I can't allow myself to say that I'm having a challenge. And that's really what I want to get to. You might have said, well, I, I didn't receive that first part. Well, well, here's the part that I'm getting to, where religion tricks a lot of people. Because you, because you claim and we claim to know God, we, we, don't want to, we don't want to expose the challenges that we face. Hear me. The hurt that we're carrying. Depression that we're fighting. I'm not saying admit it or confess it to somebody else. Just with yourself before God. Saying, God, I need help. Can I share something with you? It's okay to say, I need help. It's okay to say, I don't have it all together. The greatest trick of the enemy is to make you think you have it all together when you know deep down inside you don't have it all together. You need help. You, you, you really have not experienced the divine power of God that delivers, hear me, heals and sets free the captives. A lot of God's children are walking around, hear me, in prison, captives, held by things of the past, <clears throat> which hinders us from being who God created us to be now. Isaiah 53, 5. See, we have to remind ourselves of the truth because that religious uh, uh, way of thinking or believing is really nonsense. See, there's a reason why God gave his only begotten son. There was a purpose behind it. It wasn't just to save us, it was to cause healing. So Isaiah 53, 5 says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. And by his wounds, we are healed. There's a trade that takes place. Can I share something with you? God wants to trade places with you. God wants to, listen to me, he wants to trade, hear me, your ashes for beauty. But you have to be willing to give it up. What is it that you've been holding on to that you need to give up? Give in to. <clears throat> the, the power of God, the covenant promises of God so that you and I will walk in a level of deliverance and specifically victory that testifies that we have been delivered from that old man, that old thinking, those old ways, those old behaviors. And behold, all things have become new. You see, truth be told, and, and let me share this with you. 2 Corinthians 5.17 in the NIV says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ. See, here's a truth. Here's a truth right here. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. Listen to me. Your new you has come. The old has gone. The new is here. You know, one of the things that I've found is that everybody wants new. Everybody wants that new, new <laughs> and desires 
total healing, hear me, and victory, but are you, are you doing and being what God has called you and I to do and be? Be does not come without doing so that we can, hear me, be an expression of God, the image and likeness of God in the earth realm. To be healed and set free, family, you have to go on a journey of being honest with yourself and asking yourself, listen to me, what is it that caused that wound? What is it that, that, that caused me, hear me, to be so hurt? to where I've carried that hurt or the anger of what happened to me 20 years ago, 10 years ago with me to this very day. It's a journey. See, how, how did it come into being to where I've allowed it to, to be a, become a, a part of the fabric of who I am? You have to ask yourself questions like, what doors, listen to me, <clears throat> after I recognize, after I confront, how do I close this? How, how, how do I break this spirit? How do I break this attitude? Are you following me? How do I break this hurt, this pain that, that goes with me from relationship to relationship, from job to job? How do I break it? Because I want to tap into finally, see, your, your, your enough has to have a enough with your old man and the, and the hurts and the pains of yesterday, listen to me, yesteryears, to say, listen to me, I want that new, new now. Lord, show me how to tap into, listen to me, the newness that has been provided for me so that I'll be a fresh version of you in the earth. Are you all receiving this? Are you, are you getting what I'm sharing with you? See, and when you start asking questions like that and start to confront, hear me, <clears throat> things of, of, of old that's, that's been lingering and hanging out with you for far too long, it can get messy. It can get painful. Why? Because you're, you're opening up. It's kind of like opening up some wounds. I want to encourage you. One of the best Christmas gifts that you can buy for yourself or buy for a friend that may be hurting or a leader. <clears throat> Listen to me. Whether that be a parent or whether that be a business uh, uh, a person, entrepreneur, uh, is our new book by Dr. Micheline and I entitled Leading While Bleeding. I'm telling you, it's powerful. It's powerful. It gives you step by step on how to address and heal wounds. When we understand the price that God paid for us, things start to change. We understand the price that was paid for our, our not just spiritual redemption, but our emotional redemption. What the enemy starts to see is this gigantic sign, right? <laughs> that says off limits. Why? Man, because the blood of Jesus covers us. Hear me. And see, when you walk in that thing, bless God, the enemy don't have no right, can't touch it. The enemy has no right to touch you. The enemy cannot steal, kill, and destroy your life. Why? Because your blood bought glory to God. Amen. You're a child of the most high God. Most people, listen to me, we, we learn those scriptures. We've heard teachings on the power of the blood. We do it every first Sunday. But how many people really walk in the power of the blood? There's power in the blood. There's power. See, the blood of Jesus coupled with the Holy Ghost. I was sharing with someone the other day. <clears throat> See, when you start to uh, apply the blood, bless God, the Holy Ghost gets in there and starts to take the blood. See, the blood becomes the cleanser. <laughs> the, and, and, and the Holy Ghost starts to do this. Say, oh, let me get down in that soul. Let me get down in that soul right there. Oh, let me work on that mind. Glory to God. See, when, when that blood is applied to the mind, whoo, 
starts to, it starts a conversion in the mind of a man. It starts a conversion, a supernatural uh, 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 transformation in the thinking of a man or a woman. See, when you understand the power of that blood, that blood, somebody needs to get this. Listen, you need to hold fast to, to this, this principle that I'm sharing with you now. Listen, you plead the blood over your soul. You bleed the blood over your mind, bless God. You, you, ple- you start to plead the blood over your heart and your soul. And, and listen to me, there'll be a big old gigantic sign that says to, to the enemy, off limits. Are you receiving this? See, he's not legally granted access <clears throat> into your life into your house why because you're God's property your house is God's house <clears throat> he's he's Lord he reigns supreme so therefore we can stand under the truth of God's word and the revelation of God's word that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Why? Because I'm a new creature in Christ. Listen to me. I've been repositioned, bless God. Reborn born again, bless God. And I'm everything, hear me. I'm everything that God has called me to be. See, at some point in time, we have to get to a place where we're not, we're, we're not. We're not on the journey constantly addressing and trying to fix old stuff. Are you hearing me? I, I don't know about you, but I, get, I, I have had my moments where I'm tired of dealing with old stuff. <clears throat> I want that new new. <laughs> oh, you hear me? See, every day... Every day God blesses you, blesses me to open our eyes. Scripture says his mercies are new (laughs) every day. And I find that, that every day I need it. Why? Because it's it's not it's not just God overlooking my flaws, it's God. Giving me another opportunity to be a fresh version of myself. Father, I want to be a fresh version of who you created me to be as a man. A fresh version of myself so that I can be the husband that you called me to be to my wife. A fresh version of myself so that I can be the parent that I need to be. I can't do it without you. See, ego and pride runs interference with you humbling yourself and say, Lord, I need you. I, I need you to do this. I, I, I need this. I, I need you, <clears throat> your power to keep doing that which you have ordained me to do, and that is be an extension of you. Work with me. Because when there starts to be a whole you and it starts to be a whole me together, we become a force to be reckoned with. Together, we can do some great things. Together, we can build the kingdom. Together, we become bridge builders. Together, we are the image and likeness of God. You cannot get the image and likeness of God without everybody else in the family being on one accord. Are you getting this? The the way that I'm sharing with you is the way that God, listen to me. I talk to God and share with God what what I need from him. Because I know I don't have it all together. I'm an imperfect man. (laughs) Made perfect through the blood of Jesus. Did you hear what I just said? I'm an imperfect man made perfect by the blood of Jesus. So when you see something really special like certain fireworks going off from a child of God, it's just God showing off. 
And how many of you know that God wants to show off in each and every one of our lives every single day? I, I want God to go, you know what? I can use that boy right there. His heart is right. His spirit is right. Bless God. He didn't got over all that crazy stuff. 20 years pastoring. And my wife from time to time would tell me, and I'm not shooting no shade at anybody else. But she'd tell me, she said, you know, you're carrying the residue of what went wrong over there in that house over here. Now, if you, if you got to know me to kind of read through what I'm saying. And I, I, my, initially I go, no, no, no. And then one day I realized that I carried the hurts and pains of that place, of that house, over to this house, over to my house, over to the house of God. Why? Because I never really got over what happened over there. I hope I'm helping somebody. And then the Lord started to show me. He said, you've allowed that wound to become a part of the fabric of who you are. And you're not going to have new breakthroughs until you address that stuff. And specifically, hear me, start to allow my word to heal you the way that it needs to heal you so that you can release this stuff. Then one day I just, I said, Lord, I want to release, I, Lord, help me release that. Help me release that, because I want to walk in that new, new. I, I want to walk in the newness that you provide every day. And so I started to do better. But every now and then, I'm just being transparent with you, honest with you. Every now and then, that thing will pop up. And she said, there it go again. <clears throat> and it helped, it helped bring me into a, a, back into a, a consciousness, hear me, a purposefulness about, hear me, not allowing old things, triggers, listen to me, to, to get me caught up. Because you know what the enemy loves? He loves it when we're stuck. He loves it when we're stuck in a rut. I, I, I used to do this little analogy. It's like a DJ when he's playing music. Dun, dun, tsh, dun, 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 tsh, dun, dun. You in the party, you're getting on, it's good, right? Oh, throw your hands up, throw your hands up, right? And then in the middle, tsh, 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 tsh. You're like, what happened to the music? The needle got off track. The DJ allowed somebody here to hit, threw everything off. What is it that you keep allowing to throw everything off? Because you got to get to the point. Listen, we need other people around us to let us know when our needle's off. So when we're out of the spirit, then we got to get to a place, hear me, that, man, that old stuff is not, listen, it's, it's no longer part of my journey. It no longer has an effect on me. I no longer allow a fool to get the best of me. Why? Because I'm walking in the newness and likeness of Jesus Christ. Why? So I can help build something big. Family, I love you. I appreciate you. I value each and every one of you. Those of you who are members here at Abundant Harvest Lip. I don't know if I've said this this year, but thank you for allowing me to be your pastor. I've been able to see in the past nine months who I'm really pastoring. So this uh, pandemic has been good in a lot of ways. And it's beautiful. Because God brings a lot of clarity about it. Dr. Michelin and I love you, appreciate you, value. <clears throat> and there ain't nothing you can do about it. Praise the Lord, family. I hope that you have been blessed by this kingdom message today. Uh, if you're out there and you're saying, you know what? I, I haven't quite heard it like this. Uh, let me share something with you, my friend. God loves you. God loves you. I don't care what your past has been like. I don't, I don't care what's going on in your life right now. You know, God is only concerned about your future and specifically your 
your, your future with him. And so if you're, you're out there and, and you say, you know what, I've never received Jesus as Lord and Savior. Today's your day, my friend. If you're listening right now and you're saying, you know what, I, I, because I've been hurt, I've been stuck. I, I, I've been in a dark place. I, I've, I've done things that I'm not proud of. I, I've, I've gone away from the Lord. But the good news is, my friend, although you may have walked away from God, God never walked away from you. His hand has, has continuously stayed stretched out to you. So if the Lord is speaking to you right now, your spirit man knows, I, I need to have a relationship with God. This is your moment in time and space to change the trajectory of your destiny. I want you to pray with me right now. Repeat this after me. Dear Heavenly Father, today I ask you to come into my heart, to take up residency in my life. I make you Lord and Savior of my life. I believe that Jesus died just for me. And you raised him up from the dead. And as he sits at your right hand, Father, I believe that not only is Jesus making intercession for me, but I'm seated with him next to you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Welcome to the family of faith. Praise God. It's a blessing to welcome you into the family of faith. And listen, if you don't have a Bible, if you like information on salvation, you like information on assurance of salvation, write us. Go to lift411.org. Go to the bottom of the website. Drop in your name, your, your, your number, and even if you want somebody to call and pray with you, we'll call and pray with you, and we'll mail you a free Bible or any information that you need for your spiritual edification. Uh, so with that, God bless you. Um, well, family, at this time, you know what time it is. It's time to sow into the kingdom, praise God. It's time to sow into the ministry, bless God. Amen. God says, you know what? Um, I give seed to the sower. So if you're a sower, this is our opportune time to sow into the ministry. Amen. Sow into the kingdom. Sow into good ground, bless God. And God says, listen to me, as you give, I'll make sure that there are others who are raised up on your behalf to be a blessing to you. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. And God says, listen, if you sow, listen to me, I promise you that I'll make sure that you have more seed. Amen. Not just for your house, but for those around you. Well, you see all the opportunities to give on the screen. Uh, use the Cash App. Go to Tithely on your cell phone. Go to the blue button for Tithely, Tithely, and uh, look for Abundant Harvest Lift. Download that app. You'll even have access to a lot of free content, programs, Bible studies, uh, videos, all kind of exciting things that we offer on our app. So we encourage you to get that today. Again, this is your time to sow. I set my faith in agreement with you that every need is met for you, your household, and your loved ones as a result of your obedience, amen, and your love for God to be a giver, amen. All right, well, that's it. That's all. Uh, check out this last message before we close this service. Uh, we're excited to announce this week our launch of a new kingdom community platform. Yes, a new kingdom community platform, kingdomofgodinternational.net. We're excited about it. Uh, check out this promo, and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Merry Christmas from me and Dr. Micheline to you and your loved ones. Greetings, family, in the mighty name of Jesus. This is Elder Robert Mito. We just want to let you know that we love you, we miss you, and on behalf of Pastor McFarlane and Dr. Micheline, we want to let you know you're in our prayers daily. We're not together physically, but spiritually we're here. And we want to let you know that anything you need, any need you have, please contact us in the mighty name of Jesus. We love you and we're here to help you. Together we stand in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends, we are experiencing unprecedented times. The writing is clearly upon the walls of our nation and the world. I speak to you now, Christians, nationwide families of God, 
business owners, and church leaders of all denominations. As we open our eyes, we can see the signs all around us and understand end time prophecy. We must be ready for the impending next crisis. No matter what political leader is in office, God wants to do something in this earth realm that will not be done by the leading of popular leaders, but by his people. Noah was a righteous man who walked with God. Seeing that the earth was corrupt and filled with violence, God instructed Noah to build an ark that would enable him, his family, and creation to escape what was to come. We must be like Noah, who was 100% prepared to build something special to help his family. Bible history reports the first powerful infrastructure was found in the kingdom of Judah and Israel. Fast forward to the first century and we see the book of Acts church where they had all things in common. Then came other powerful wealth building community infrastructures like Black Wall Street and the Hispanic Unidos. Today, there are countless organizations with the same self-help intent like the Latter-day Saints who created a community that cares for their own. It's time to unite. Be a part of a community of believers who care and look out for each other's needs. Simply put, a community driven by a spirit of generosity. That's the purpose of Kingdom of God International, which was established over 14 years ago. Koji exists to unify the body of Christ by crossing denominational and ethnic lines, creating a society that promotes tangible support and economic change for everyone. Yes. This is about the body of Christ, God's people, people of all colors and ethnic backgrounds, Hispanics, Asians, blacks, and whites, presenting as a unit, a unified, united and caring community coming together to support one another. Imagine having access 24 seven to a platform that features a community that grows its own fruits and vegetables, has a trade and bartering platform network for you to swap goods and services for free, provides bulk purchasing as a group just in case the store is shut down. There's a system in place, health education and free consultation with health professionals, online shopping like Amazon with Christian owned businesses where our dollars bounce 10, 15, 20 times before it hits the world, featuring a five star nationwide business directory, economic wealth sharing, disaster preparedness information, and soon a TV network like none other. Koji is intended to revolutionize the power of collaboration by providing a platform that values and empowers everyone through a spirit of generosity. Our mission, for none to suffer lack. If you're viewing this video, that means someone cared enough about you to make sure you're a part of building something bigger than yourself, especially in this season. It's happening now. Call today, 800-282-6056 to find out how you can be a part of this movement that supports the body of Christ from every state across the country, north, south, east, and west. Connect and subscribe today. KingdomofGodInternational.net